And so your enemy is not your neighbor. Hallelujah. It's not your co-worker. Hallelujah. It's not your husband or your wife. It's, it's not your supervisor at work. It's, it's not your children. It's the devil, my God, and his demons. I want you to, to get it into your subconscious. Hey, God. Hallelujah. Many of us, we are not having the victory. We are being defeated because we are fighting the wrong fight. We are fighting the wrong people. We are using the wrong weapons. My God, hallelujah. Welcome again to Living Free. I'm your host, Apostle Oscar James, and it is really a pleasure to have you join with me today. I believe again the Lord has a message for us today and so I want to invite you, call up a friend, you know, tell somebody living free is on. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So together we can dig deep in the word of Almighty God. Hallelujah. My topic to you today is they shall bow. They shall bow. As believers, we are oftentimes living in defeat, living defeated lives. The demons have invaded our space and are causing havoc, havoc in our mind and body and homes and, and with our children and our finances and even in our communities. Hallelujah. They are having their way, doing what they want to do. But, but why? Why is this happening? Because one, we don't recognize them. Hallelujah. We don't recognize them and their activities. And we are not exercising the power we have against them as children of God. And so if we are going to walk victoriously, hallelujah, hallelujah, two things are important. If we are going to see victory in our homes and in our finances and in our families, oh God, yes, and in our lives and in our community, then two things are important. The first one is that we must identify the enemy, hallelujah. And then two, we must utilize the weapons we have against the enemy. We must identify who we are fighting against, hallelujah. So let us seek to identify our enemy, hallelujah, hallelujah. Turn with me to the book of Ephesians chapter 6, reading verse 12. Hear what the word of God says, hallelujah. It says, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against rulers, my God, against authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. Interestingly, wow, wow. So it says, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Flesh and blood means human beings, hallelujah. But we wrestle against spiritual forces, hey, and it describes them, it says, against rulers and authorities and against cosmic power over this present darkness, over this darkness, hallelujah, and against spiritual forces in heavenly places, yes, yes. But hear what he says in Ephesians 2 and verse 2. He says, in which you once walked, he's talking to them as believers. Hallelujah. He says, you as a believer, you as a Christian, you once walked following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the ear, following who? The prince, my God, of the power of the ear, the spirits that is now at work 
in the sons of disobedience. My God, hallelujah. So there are some spirits that are working in the sons of disobedience. So here we see that we are not fighting against human beings. We're not fighting against flesh and blood, but we are fighting against spiritual entities, entities in the earth, entities in people and entities in the heavenlies. My God, oh God, you might say, hey, we have a big fight. We are fighting against a lot. Oh God. But it is interesting to understand that though it seems like we are fighting against a lot, those who are with us, oh God, is greater than those that are against us. Hallelujah. The word of God says, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. It is interesting that Jesus, when he was on the cross, when he was being crucified, he said this of those who were crucifying him. He says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. I mean, this is really interesting. Why would Jesus say this of those who boxed him, of those who, who beat him, my God, of those who tortured him, of those who nailed him on the cross, of his murderers, hallelujah. Why would Jesus say this about them? It is because he knew that they were not the real enemies, hallelujah, hallelujah. They were only pawns, they were only puppets, they were only tools being used by the enemy, hallelujah. As Ephesians 2 and verse 2 says, those, hallelujah, who walk in disobedience, disobedience to the word of God, disobedience to the principles of God, disobedience to the kingdom of God, they are following the course of the world. They are following and are being led by and used and manipulated by the prince of the power of the air. It, you know, um, Psalms 22 is really a very interesting psalm. It's a depiction of the activities of Jesus' crucifixion. Some of it is literally word for word as it relates to what happened on the day of Jesus' crucifixion that can be found in Matthew 27. Let us look at a few verses of Psalms 22, reading from verse 1, and see, hallelujah, if we can identify some similarity with Jesus' crucifixion. Here are the verses. Verse 1. It says, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Hallelujah. Is this not what Jesus declared? Oh God. When he says, Eli, Eli, lama sabatani. Oh God. Yes, Jesus confessed it. Then let, let's read on. Let's read on. Why are you so far from saving me? From the words of my groaning. Verse 6. But I am a worm and not a man. Scorned by mankind and despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They make mouth at me. Hallelujah. They wag their heads. Oh God. They wag their heads. Isn't that true? Isn't that what happened to Jesus? They mocked him. They scorned him. Oh God. They wag their heads at him. Verse 8 says, He trust in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him, for he delights in him. That is exactly what the Pharisees said. Oh, God. And what some of the people said. They said, yes, man, see him there. Even one of the thieves on the cross said the same thing. Oh, God. They, they, they said, didn't he say that he's the son of God? Didn't he say God is his father? Then, then, then come down off the cross. He saved others. Why he doesn't save himself? What? Where is his God? Oh God. Why doesn't he let his God deliver him? All of these things they are saying against Jesus. Verse 12. Many bulls encompass me. Strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouth at me. Like a ravening and roaring lion. My God. I am poured out like water 
All my bones are out of joint, O oh God. My heart is like wax. It is melted within my breast, O oh God. My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death, for dogs encompass me, a company of evildoers encircle me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I mean, oh God, it's so clear. It's so clear. Oh God, I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them. And for my clothes, they cast lots. Oh God, isn't this a depiction of what happened to Jesus? Here! How the psalm describe the agony that he felt. Oh God, all his bones were out of joint. His heart melted, oh God, within him. Oh God, look at what Jesus took on for us. Hey God, what he experienced for you and for me. But though all these people mocked him, beat him, pierced him, his focus was not on them because he knew who his real enemy was. Let me repeat that again. Though all these people mocked him, beat him, jeered him, my God, pierced him, oh God Almighty, his focus was not on them because he knew who his real enemy was. L let's look at what verse 12 says. Verse 12, it says, Many bulls encompass me. Strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouth at me like a ravening and roaring lion. Interestingly, in the Matthew text, Matthew chapter 7 text, we don't see any imagery, hey God, of these bulls of Bashan, hallelujah, surrounding Jesus. What is it that this passage is describing? Who are the bulls of Bashan? Let's look at Amos chapter 4. Hallelujah. Verse 1. Hear this word. He calls of Bashan, the prophet said. Hallelujah. By the word of the Lord. Who are on the mountain of Samaria who oppress the poor, who crush the needy, who say to your husbands, bring that we might drink. Interestingly, Hamas here is describing, hallelujah, these bulls of Bashan that they are oppressors, hallelujah, of the poor. They crush the weak, and the needy and demand, hallelujah, from the head of the homes or families. Bulls represents power. It represents strength. It represents might, hallelujah. Or you could say mighty ones, hallelujah. <laughs> Interesting. The word Bashan is the Hebrew word basically Bashan which means serpent, reptile, or snake. So these are mighty ones of the serpent. Interesting, isn't it? This mountain was referred to by ancient people as the gates of hell. Hence, these bulls represent principalities, hey God, powers, rulers, these beings who had rebelled against God, hallelujah, and taken the side of the serpent, the Nahash, hallelujah, which we saw in Genesis, who led a rebellion of humanity against God. He also led a rebellion of the sons of God, the principalities, hey God, many of them against God, hallelujah. 
These rebels were oppressing the people, requiring tribute from them. Hallelujah. Hey, and that they should worship them rather than worshiping God. These rebels or principalities are the ones who surrounded Jesus. They were using the people, hallelujah, to do their bidding, but they were the real enemies. Hey, God, they were the true enemies. Hey, God, they were the ones who were standing against Jesus. In 1 Corinthians 2, verse 7 through to 8, listen to what it says. Listen to who it describes that are, are the perpetrators, hey God, the ones who really crucified Jesus. Hear what it says. It says, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. My God, hallelujah. It is the princes, the principalities, my God, of this world who crucified the Lord. If they knew, if they only understood, hallelujah, my God, they would not have crucified the Lord God Almighty. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Interestingly, in the book of Matthew 21, verses 33 and going down, Jesus spoke a parable, an interesting parable, and it spoke about a vineyard, hallelujah, the owner of a vineyard who created a vineyard and put people in charge. He leased it out. He gave persons charge over the vineyard. And when the time came for harvesting and he was to receive that which was due to him, hallelujah, hallelujah, they did not give him what was due to him, hallelujah. And even though he sent messengers, oh God, to warn them, to tell them, the parable says, they murdered the messengers, they killed him. But then he said, well, I will send my son. They will have respect for my son. But Jesus said, hey, God, when the son came here, what these husband men said concerning the son. Verse 37. Oh, my God. Finally, he sent his son to them saying, they will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and have his inheritance. It is interesting to me here that this passage, I believe it has several meanings and connotations. Yes, yes, it can mean, hallelujah, the leaders and the rulers and high priests and so on in Israel who resisted the truth of God, the word of God. But I believe it's also speaking about the principalities. Jesus was also speaking not only about the high priest, hallelujah, and these guys, but about the principalities because how would the high priest know that this Son is the ear of the kingdom, hallelujah. Is the ear of the kingdom of God, not just of Israel, but of the whole world, of the heavens and the earth. Jesus is the ear of the kingdom, my God. And these rebellious princes, they knew him. They knew who he was. Didn't the Bible tell us that one of them fell at his feet and cried out, we know you, we know you. You are the son of the living God. I you hear me somebody they knew who he was and they wanted to kill him to destroy him which they thought they could do hallelujah and take possession hallelujah of the kingdom god required worship 
And instead of allowing the people to worship God, hallelujah, which was his due, they took worship for themselves. And all these other gods, all these idols, all these Egyptian gods and these Roman gods and these oh, Grecian gods, and oh God, all of these gods, hallelujah, they are hypocritical liars. They are rebels, hallelujah, who is taking unto themselves what is due to God. Hallelujah. Yes. And the passage tells us that God is coming to judge them. So Jesus knew who his real enemies were. Hallelujah. His real enemies were principalities and powers. Here another indicator of who these bulls of Bashan were. Interestingly, it described them as being roaring liars, hey God, seeking, hallelujah, to devour, hallelujah. Hear what First Peter 5 and verse 8 says. It says, be sober-minded and be watchful for your adversary, there the word enemy, hallelujah, the devil, who is the adversary, who is the enemy, the devil, hallelujah, he says, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. Jesus knew who his real enemy was. Hallelujah. And so his focus was not on flesh and blood. It was on, hallelujah, principalities and powers. But they thought they defeated him, oh God. But the Bible tells us on the third day he arose again in triumph. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God, he arose again in victory and triumph hallelujah and so your enemy is not your neighbor hallelujah it's not your co-worker hallelujah it's not your husband or your wife it's it's not your supervisor at work it's it's not your children it's demons and devils my god oh god it is the devil and his demons that are your enemy my god my enemy is the devil and his demons. Come on, say somebody say that with me. Say that with me. Repeat that after me. Say, my enemy, oh God, is the devil and his demons. <laughs> my God, I, I think you should repeat that another time. Say, my enemy is the devil, my God, and his demons. I want you to, to get it into your subconscious. Hey, God, hallelujah. Because so many times we are fighting against each other. We fight against our brethren at church. My God, we fight against our family members. We fight against our co-workers. We fight against flesh and blood. Hallelujah, my God. Hey, but our battle is not against flesh and blood and the weapons that we have available to us uh, is not against flesh and blood uh, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal they are not flesh and blood uh, but they are mighty true god hallelujah my god yes 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 but many of us we are not having the victory we are being defeated because we are fighting the wrong fight we are fighting the wrong people we are using the wrong weapons my god hallelujah we use using revenge we're using vengeance we're using anger we're using hatred my god we're using malice we're using gossip we're using so many things that is not the weapons that god has given us to fight with hallelujah so my enemy is the devil and his demons hallelujah so let us look now at utilizing the weapon, oh God, the real weapon that is available to us. What is this weapon? It is the most powerful, oh God, thing that we have in our arsenal. Hey, God Almighty, more powerful than a nuclear bomb, my God. Hey, Shaka, Rukun, Tulumusia, We have got the most powerful powerful thing hallelujah the most powerful weapon the most powerful tool that is available to us and it is the name of jesus 
Hallelujah. It is the name of Jesus. It is the name of Jesus. The writer says in Philippians 2 verse 5 through to 11. It says, let this mind be in you. Let a different mind be in you, oh God. Not the carnal mind, hallelujah, but the spiritual mind, the, the heavenly mind, the mind of Christ. He says, let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon himself the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. Listen to verse 8 now, my God. And being found in the fashion of a man, as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death upon the cross. My God. So ain't no demons and devils. Oh God, they were his enemies, but they could not kill him unless he allowed. My God, he humbled himself. Hallelujah. To the torture and to the beating and to death. My God, for you and for me that we might walk in freedom, that we might walk in power, that we might walk in authority. I want you to understand today that Jesus has died to give us access to power. My God. Hey, Jesus. The most deadly Makaribo Sata weapon, my God, a weapon that can destroy, a weapon that can uproot, a weapon that can bring life, a weapon, my God, hallelujah, hey God, that can transform, it can build up, and it can tear down, my God, hey Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah. So, verse 8 says. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on the cross. Verse 9. Wherefore, God has also highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, my God, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in heart and things under the earth, my God. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. I love the fact that the passage is so specific. Hallelujah, my God. It says of things in heaven and of things in the earth, my God, and of things under the earth, my God Almighty, hey God, there is no way and nowhere for anything to hide. Everything should bow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the glory of God the Father. 